Here come the Bowers. Y'all ready to go swimming, baby? Come on. Give it up. Get out of that water. I tried telling y'all. It's swim lessons, baby. <laughs> Today's guest is Mark Gibson. Mark Gibson is longtime coach at Bismarck High, located in Bismarck, North Dakota. A weird uh, stat, but it's a stat that uh, stands out and kind of separates Coach Gibson from everybody else is he's six for 12. Again, six for 12 in state championships. That's the kind of run this guy has went on as a head football coach. Coach Gibson's a really cool guy. I really appreciate getting to talk with him and learning more about the game of football and all about Bismarck High football and kind of his career path getting to this point in his life. And it was insightful. I really appreciate the guy. He's a really cool, nice guy. And uh, I, I have nothing but great things to say. But before we get to Coach Gibson, we got to talk about PSP Network. It's game day, everybody. PSP Network promoting local athletes for a long time. Their website is psp.network or find them at YouTube. It's at PSP Network. PSP Network has just wrapped up their uh, season for sports, whether it was football, boys and girls, basketball, everything under the sun. If you're a local student athlete and you want to watch some game film, go check them out on YouTube. Or if you want to hear the great and legendary voice of Nick Holberg, listen to, uh, to them on YouTube. It's at PSP Network or check them out online. I know they have a little donation area too to to help the, the process and help everything go for next year. So really pre appreciate everybody at PSP Network. Next up is the great and powerful Sports on Tap and Planet Pizza, Minot's best place to have any kind of fun. They've been owned and operated by the Mueller family for the almost 30 years. You can find them on Facebook at Sports on Tap or give them a call, 701-837-8220. Planet Pizza is the best pizza in Minot. And uh, if you're ever in the city, get something to go. And they got these things, these loaded breadsticks. My goodness, they are uh, delightful and something that uh, I always try to have, even though I am on this supposed diet. But uh, I love Planet Pizza and Sports on Tap. Next up is Neighborhood Pediatric Therapy. They are located in the central part of Minot, and they provide speech and therapy services for individuals from birth to age 21. Services range from free screenings, speech and language evaluations, and therapy for a variety of areas, including feeding, language, speech sounds, and auditory processing. They also accept a wide variety of insurance insurances, so you can look them up and get more information about them on their website at www.neighborhoodnd.com or give them a call to set up an appointment today at 701-837-8877. Appreciate them. And last but not least, the great and powerful Glasso Angus, a proud sponsor of Swim Lessons. Glasso Angus is your premier source for registered Black Angus cattle since 1973. Glasso Angus cattle showcase dominance, durability, and docility and are built to thrive on the Northern Plains. Check them out at Glasso, G L A S O E, Angus.com. That's it for the ads. Appreciate everybody. Uh, make sure your notifications are on. Like and subscribe. Again, my name is Dallas Hansen, and I'm about to. This one was a good one. It is head football coach of Bismarck High, Mark Gibson. Coach Mark Gibson in three, two, one, go. Hey, coach, good to have you on board here. It's a it's pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah. pleasure to be here. It's a, I've uh, been a fan from afar, so it's um, an honor to be here with you. Are you ready to play some cribbage tonight? Well, I, I don't know if we got any cribbage <laughs> players in the house here. I know that um, you know Jordan Wilhelm, had, we, he and I play at Bismarck High School, and he needs a hell of a lot of help because he's not very good. <laughs> well, speaking of help, I, I called Willie before our interview to just get some more intel on you. That's and Willie said you were down in Kingman, Arizona, yeah. coaching basketball. It was JV or junior high, I'm not sure. JV. And, and he's like, I'm ready for him to coach some basketball. Well, I've asked, I've asked <laughs> multiple times to be on his staff. <laughs> But there's some stipulations. Number one, I'm not going to travel. Yep. Uh, number two, I was going to be a C coach, and um, I wanted to be on the main floor from three three thirty to four o'clock every day. But he he still hasn't taken that, so <laughs> I'm still unemployed in the winter. Well, uh, let's let's cut right into it. I mean, coach, you've got uh, six total state championships, right? You went six for twelve in the Mondek 
or the excuse me the Dakota Bowl games. Yep. What's it like um, to be a six-time state champion? Come into this Dan Stant Memorial Coaching Clinic and talk to all these guys and all the people you've had great memories with, and kind of the coaching fraternity, if you will. Well, I think you know uh, this started with with uh, Dan, who was uh, uh, you know we have the summer Blue Hawk camp, mm-hmm. and he was always there. Um, you know, Dan was a player here, and he was a younger player when I played here. Uh, you're not going to meet a better person uh, at all than Dan Stanton. And that's uh, on and off the field, on and off the playing field. Uh, he is about as as straight shooter there is. And I think you can say that about all the Stantons. And I think, uh, you know, I I, I, had, I was fortunate to play with Pete. Um, and, and Pete is probably the, uh, you know, he's, he's a guy that's had a lot of opportunities to go different places. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Pete's been very good to me personally with with our football kids, uh, a lot of our players, even my own son. And so, uh, you know, unfortunately, when when something tragedy like this happens to somebody young that uh, really does deserve to go, um, you know, anything we can do as coaches to get together and do things in, in, in his memory is is obviously something we should jump at the opportunity to. And I think it's something that uh, he would like, um, you know, it's something that, you know, seeing us to get together and, 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 and his name is, is something that obviously that, you know, both Montana is supported very well in uh, North Dakota. And I think more and more coaches are getting out and it's, you know, that's the other part of it is it's a good clinic and it's, uh, you know, we've, we've been to the Glacier, we've been in the issue, we've been to UND and, you know, this clinic is as good as any of those guys and, you know, they do a heck of a job putting it on. And like I said, it all goes to a good thing. And it's something that, uh, uh, you know, anytime we can get together, remember things that he did for this institution and just the person he was is, is a good thing. Yeah. Nobody has anything bad to say about Dan. Um, that kind of leads me into my next question. And I, I talked to Dean Winchesky, Minot High's boys basketball coach, and, and he coaches his son, Eric, mm-hmm. and they have a very unique relationship. And, and I wanted to ask you, because um, you obviously coached Hayden. Uh, he was a great quarterback for you guys. Great quarterback here at Dickinson State. Now he's kind of embarking on his own coaching uh, adventure, if you will, here at Dickinson State. What was it like, though, for, for you to coach your son at not only a position but a big-time position, quarterback? I mean, that's that's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Well, we – you know, Hayden had an older brother, Tyson, too, that played for us, too. And okay. so it was something that it's it's not easy. And it's something where you have to, um, you know, you get the their favoritism. I, I wanted to make sure that Hayden earned everything and Tyson the same way that earned everything that they got. Uh, I'll give you a story about Hayden when he was in ninth grade. Um, you know, he did very well as a freshman. And matter of fact, our JV coaches wanted him to come up and play. And really? I, and I said, absolutely not. And I think that was something that, you know, looking back at that now is something that, you know, if I'm a coach of any other kid, he probably moves. And so really that's not fair to him, you know, in some of the things. Uh, but also you as a coach have to make sure you go above and beyond and make sure that you're not showing favoritism to, to your son because – it is your son. And, uh, uh, you know, Hayden handled all that very well. And so did Tyson. And it's something that it's not easy. And it's something that, you know, people are, and I, and I think the sad thing about society right now is, is with social media and, and people going yeah. behind things. And yeah. I just got out of a session with, with, uh, uh, Chauncey, who was, uh, who was at Minot and he was talking about how he got a text uh, from a parent during a game and talked about how bad a coaching he was during during the game. And Did he read it? I uh, know. I don't think he read it during the day. He read he it after, it. but he had it posted. He didn't have the parent's name. But it goes to show that where we're at with society, it, it, it's, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, I've always kind of had a philosophy that, you know, I think that you as a parent, your job is to parent mm-hmm. and our job is to coach. And I've had parent meetings where that's basically what I've said. You know, you be the parent, I'll be the coach. Yeah. And so now when you're talking coaching your own kid, now you're doing both. And so I think the one thing was, is we made sure that, uh, if you want to say a professional basis or however you want to say it, but we kept things, you know, I, I made sure that whatever, if he did something wrong, it wasn't something where um, I just kind of was a parent first. I was a coach first. Mm-hmm. And so there was a correction there. And then the other part of that was sometimes you end up and looking back, you, you're probably a little bit too hard on them as far as 
uh, because you probably expect to, you expect a lot more. Yeah. And I think the one thing for me that brought great enjoyment in my life was coming here, you know, just watch him as being a fan because you never get to do that in high school. Yeah. Um, and so that was kind of nice for me personally is, is I got to come and just be a, a dad and just watch it and, uh, you know, enjoy those four years that he played here. And, and uh, you know, again, you could have asked for a better situation for him to walk into with, with the coaches that he had and the, the program that he went into. Let's let's bring it back. Let's tailor it back a little bit uh, with from those questions. Take us back to your in Bismarck at high school, uh, at Bismarck High, playing football. Do you get recruited by Dickinson State, or was there a few other players along the the lines there? Or I was I, uh, I was recruited uh, by a few schools. Um, I actually was going to sign at Minot State. Ooh, and Hot take. Uh, yeah, I was going to sign at Minot State. Uh, Coach Hedberg was the head coach then, Randy okay. Hedberg. Yep. Uh, he came down and took my folks and I out to dinner, and he had the papers in hand. And uh, I told him, I, I kind of got a late call from Dickens State, and I said, I just want to go make sure I want to go visit Dickens State before I commit. And he was very professional about it. Um, said, yeah, I understand. You should go You know, do those things. And so I came out to Dickens State on a Friday or Saturday, I can't remember what it was, and told uh, I told the coaching staff here that I was going to sign here. And Coach Ringy and Coach Etzel were at my house Sunday night, and I signed with them the, that weekend. Uh, I can tell you honestly that it was considerably less money than I was going to make. I was going to have in Minot State, but it just felt right. You know, the coaches, the players. And that's basically what I tell our kids now being recruited. Um, you got to go visit. You mm-hmm. got to go get the vibe. And there was a vibe, and it was something that, uh, you know, just felt right. And, uh, you know, it's the best decision I ever made. Um, and I've made a lot of bad decisions, but uh, <laughs> that certainly was one of the best decisions I've ever made because, uh, you know, the guys that uh, uh, that I was able to p- be under as a player, the coaches that I had were – very instrumental in my life and, and always have been and still to this day. Um, you know, those guys, uh, you know, Coach Bijou, who you've had on here, mm-hmm. is is uh, somebody who I consider like a father figure to me and always yeah. have and always will. Uh, you know, Coach Ringy was there for a short time when I first got there, just a super guy, super coach, Coach Etzel, who's here at a clinic still to today. Um, you know, Coach Hofflin, who uh, tried to drown me in, in senior or not. Why doesn't that surprise me? The, uh, <laughs> he tried to drown me in life saving, whatever it was the, the the swimming class. But yeah, you know the the just the relationships that you build and those guys that uh, are pretty special to me and always will be. So, uh, what was Dickinson State like back then? Because I mean, for a lot of people listening, they see this brand new facility that we're in tonight, <laughs> yeah, it was, but it wasn't anything like it that. It wasn't like that. Uh, I, yeah. I'll tell you a story about it because the tailgate that they have was mm-hmm. is something very special, and it was actually Coach Hoffman was out there, and and uh, you know they have the Hawk Walk, yeah. And if you haven't if you haven't experienced that, you need to experience that because it's it's actually pretty special. And so the, the guys are walking through and everybody's shaking their hands. And I and I was standing next to Coach Hoff and I said, why the hell didn't we do this when we were playing? He goes, well, you guys would have stopped and drank with him. I said, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's probably a good solid point. But, uh, you know, just the relationships that you build with uh, the players that, that I was able to play with, you know, guys like Travis Olson and Danny Olson, uh, you know, those guys, uh, Pete Stanton. Uh, just, you played with Pete? Yeah. Yeah. What was that like? He Take was, us into the locker room, so, please. Uh, I would love to give you some dirt on on Coach yes. Stanton. I don't have any. Okay. I mean, what you see with him is the is the is very proper. Is is probably what you know the way he was. I'd like to say the same thing about myself, but I was uh, uh, I was a little bit more adventurous. But he was <laughs> he was somebody who uh, was very smart. Yeah. Um, very athletic, did a lot of things right. It was like having a coach on the field. And I think everybody kind of knew eventually that this was a spot for him to come back to. And it was something that, uh, uh, you know, he was made for this. And it's something that, you know, I know that people of Dickinson and certainly me as being an alumni, uh, very proud of the job that he's done here. So you finish out here at Dickinson State. Finished What's... out in Dickinson State. And then I met my um, then wife, uh, Lori. She was a she was a cross country and track uh, person here, okay. and uh, uh, we. Uh, my first job was in Washburn, North Dakota. Nice. Yep. And she was doing her student teaching. We married very young, 
which was, you know, looking back now, was we, we obviously were – uh, weren't ready for that yeah. and so uh, uh it was a whirlwind life in a hurry and um you know i told I, I taught the one and coached the one year in washburn and then a job opened up because there was nothing really for her teaching wise in washburn so we uh went to kingman arizona okay just kind of on a whim and i actually loved it I, um enjoyed it down there you know the football down there was a little bit different as far as the times it's they have spring ball and mm-hmm. there's a little bit more commitment um, you know, emphasis on things. And, and basically what they were trying to do was model Texas football. And they're not Texas football, but they were trying to take that a little bit. The state championship goes all the way in December. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I think it was something that the nine years that I was fortunate enough to work with a guy by the name of Ray Smith, who was my mentor and a guy that meant a lot to me and is a very good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, the job opened up here and I've always kind of was looking back and we basically, Lori and I wanted to raise our kids back here. And, uh, you know, so when they had job open up, I didn't think I had a chance in hell to get it and uh, put my name in the ring and, um, ended up with the job. And, uh, you know, I, I be honest with you, I took over for a legendary Bob Feeney who was there for many years, was my high school coach. And I, I can't remember how many years he's been there or was there as the head coach. And I told myself, well, there's no way in heck I can do that. And here I am in year 25 or 26, whatever it is. And uh, I just never thought it was going to be that. But, you know, once you get established and, and uh, you know, once things kind of your family starts moving and doing things and it becomes a lot more difficult to move on. And, you know, that's why it's the coaching business is a tough business. And I think mm-hmm. we see that all over from the top to bottom. What was the hiring process like then to get that? Head well, I was, up? I was supposed to, we're going to, we're going to get into some deep stuff here. Uh, Let's do it. I was supposed to fly back. Okay. Um, I want to say about two or three years prior to that I was in a, uh, flight that caught on fire. What? Yeah. So, Lori and I were flying back for Christmas and the plane started on fire and we had emergency land back in Denver. And I, and I, we got back on a plane that never, flying never used to bother me. So the next flight we took was like six months or seven months later. And I just freaked out and I just could not handle it. I yeah. mean, they shut that door and anxiety. And yes, and, yeah. I just was a mess. And so uh, I was supposed to fly back for an interview. I had Lori bought the ticket, wanted me to come. And I, and I, at the last minute, just said i'm not gonna fly back you know and i told bismarck it's too expensive and things like that and i said i I appreciate the you know reaching out to me but i know i don't have a chance and jim hauser was the ad at that time at bismarck and he said let's just wait a minute let's think about some things so this is pre-zoom days Mm -hmm. um what 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 it was was it was 11 people it was a player and the staff and there was 11 people on the committee and they were just firing questions. And he said, what we'll do is we'll tape record you. And the 11 will will uh, ask the questions and we'll just play the tape later to the committee. Kind of like an old school Zoom. It was a VCR tape. Really? Yeah, I have the tape. I have oh my somewhere. God, I that's candidate. awesome. Yeah. So uh, he, uh, I go through the interview and uh, the only thing I did was – I. Bob Feeney was kind of on the phone with me. Looking back, I guess he wasn't supposed to, but he was he was telling me like what who the finalists were, what times, mm-hmm. all these things. And he uh, told me that the one guy, and I'm not going to say his name, but there was a person that he thought was going to get it, but he was after me. So if you look at, if you watch the video, you can see me looking up the clock because I wanted to make sure I went into his time. Yeah, a little and bit. extended a little nice. bit. So I went a little bit longer and... Uh, yeah, but Jim said I got the job, and uh, it was funny because my kids, this was, I think Caden was just a baby, or maybe he was not born yet, but the, so Alexis is my uh, oldest daughter and Tyson, and they were over at the head coach's house, and I called Lori and said I got it, and they came walking in, and they just put their heads down and marched right by me like they were just mad as hell that I got the job. Yeah, you had to move? That we had to move. Yeah. So, so what what was it like going back to the alma mater? I mean, that's and you had some big shoes to fill. Had from some big shoes to fill, and it was something that uh, you know I was blessed to have some really good guys that I uh, walked into Steve Madler, who is now the principal of Century, was our defensive coordinator, and actually applied oh, wow. for the job. And that was the thing. I went to the meeting and I told the coaches, and some guys didn't want to coach, you know, because they didn't get the job, and I don't blame them. 
and I and I just told him I said I get it, you know that you you feel that you're scorned or it was something that there's some guy out of Arizona coming to take the head job and you've been here, you've ran this program. I get that. Yeah. And so I said, here's my philosophy. Here's what we're going to do. Here's where we're going to move to. Uh, if you don't feel that this is going to work for you, I have no hard feelings. And so we were scraping it together at the beginning. And, and like I said, lucky I had great support from Tom Hesford, who was my principal and, and Jim Hauser, our AD, and it was just something kind of, uh, I don't want to say open checkbook, but, you know, there was things that when it went to the equipment room, everything was thrown in a box, and it was it was just uh, some things we had to correct and get yeah. things going back in the direction, and our numbers were down a little bit, and, um, you know, I was a big two, pl- two platoon guy, and it was something that I said, you know, we got all these kids in the school uh, that we should be able to find spots for them somewhere. And maybe they're not good as, you know, maybe you're a lot better than me at, at linebacker, but, uh, you know, maybe I should be able to play a little bit and then you come in when crunch, nut crunching time and things like that. And yeah. so we kind of put the two platoon system in and, and it just kind of took off. And, and the other part of it is we had some tremendous, tremendous athletes and tremendous players. And that was, uh, you know, I don't care what coach is going to stand in front of you. It, it, you need the guys that uh, obviously that are going to get the thing. And they just had the same belief is that we wanted to kind of, uh, you know, at that time the Eastern was dominating the West. And I'm like, well, why can't we do that? And so we kind of flipped the switch a little bit and we went on a run there and it was uh, it was a fun run. And so now it's different as far as, um, you know, it kind of peaks and valleys and, you know, we were owing – we were 0-9 a couple of years ago, and so yep. it tells you where we're at. And, um, you know, it's fun being back there, fun on being on top. But when you're on top, everybody's gunning, gunning for you. For you. Um, how many years did you coach until you got that first state championship? Uh, we were in the state finals the second year. Second year. Mm-hmm. We got beat by North in 2000. We were – we we made – that was back when they took five teams. You had to play in game. Yep. So – uh, the first year, my first year in 99, we were not a very good football team, but we made the play in game. Um, and then the next year we went to the state championship and that was the kind of the turning stone. But we also had a guy by the name of Greg Esslinger and a special group of seniors behind with him that were sophomores when I got there and they were, they were kind of our heart and soul. And so then 2000, uh, 2001. That was Greg's senior year. I mean, that guy was dominant, and he uh, he had some uh, time in the NFL, right? He went some. He went to the NFL. He was uh, he was went to the Gophers. He left. He left Bismarck High. Went played for the Gophers and started all four years. No kidding. At center for the Gophers. Yeah, he run the he run the Remington, Remington Award. So no shit. Yeah, yeah. And then he went to Denver. And then he was right? at Denver, and he was at uh, Cleveland for a little stint, and then he was at the Texans and. He just, uh, he went to NFL Europe. Okay. Uh, and it just, I don't know whether there was some, he just got tired of it. And he just, you know, he uh, uh, he would talk about what a grind it is and things like that. And and, and What years was he in Denver? Uh, was boy. it the L? It no. Was, he it was, was right after. So that had been like two, and I'm probably going to say this wrong. This is about 2005, 2006, somewhere in there. And he was drafted by Denver, but I think it was one year and then they, Put him on the practice team, and it was kind of back and forth. And did he ever have any good stories he shared with? The uh, one coach? story was was uh, pretty impressive. He was with the Browns, and um, he was working with a line coach. And he gave me a name I don't remember, but he was working with one line. But the line coach, because there's so much so much contact time that they could have with him at their facility. Yep. Um, and so the line coach met him at local high school or junior high or something. And Greg was walking out of the Cleveland Browns facility and they said, can you come here and bring your playbook? And that's, yeah, you're getting loophole. cut. Yes. Oh, you're getting cut. Yeah. So he went up to the front office or whatever it was, the coaches and handed the playbook and got cut. Sure. Well, so he's leaving and he's like, well, maybe I'll just go over and drive over and see that coach. So he drives over and sees the coach and the coach just chews his ass. And he's like, where the hell you been? You think I got nothing better to do to wait for you? He goes, coach, I got caught. And he had the coach didn't even know it. And he was like, what? <laughs> he goes, no wonder we're shitty every year. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. that was one of them. And his, uh, but Greg's a super guy. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a great kid, but he's, and then also along that year, we had Weston Dressler as a sophomore that year as a receiver. Weston's first nine catches 
as a sophomore were nine touchdowns. He was nine for nine. He was that kid was dynamic. Stud. And yeah. that was honestly my next question. I'm a I love the CFL. My parents race yep. horses in Winnipeg a lot. So we would go to a lot of bomber games and mm -hmm. the Rough Rider and Bombers and, and he actually spent some time with Winnipeg as well. But I mean, talk about a stud oh. Weston Dressler. You're not gonna meet a more competitive kid. And he was a kid that no matter what you're going to do or what you're going to play, um, he was going to compete at the fullest. And um, we used to go to a Riverdale camp up in Riverdale, North Dakota. We did that for years. And they had an outdoor basketball hoop, you know, one of those metal hoop with the metal chains. Yep, yep. And they got a metal pole. And it's Weston and a couple of his guys against three of my coaches. Okay. Uh, Coach Mather, Coach Feeney, and Coach Colby. And these coaches are throwing these kids – basically just grabbing them, throwing them out of bounds. I mean, there's no whistle. Yeah. <laughs> call your own. <laughs> call your own. And and I dare you to call your foul. Yeah, yeah. So Weston goes up, and one of our coaches just takes him to, I'm like, guys, hey, he's our franchise. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Relax. So, so another story about Weston, uh, and this, this, this is something that Daryl Anderson, a longtime track coach from Bismarck High School, uh, still does or did to them when he retired. But anyway, we're on a bus. And I got on the bus, and all you do is see his faces. Mm -hmm. And I got on the bus, and I said, Weston, you on the bus? He goes, right here, coach. I said, let's go. So I just knew, <laughs> I just knew as long as he was on the bus, we got a chance. We're okay. Yeah, did you ever go to any of those, many of those CFL games? You know what? We were going to go uh, up, and he got hurt the week before. Oh. And we didn't, I was never able to go. Oh. And it was always the camps and stuff. And yeah. we just... I so we got this all arranged, and it was something that uh, we're really looking forward to when he got hurt. Talking a little bit more about uh, some players, uh, Big Jack, who played on your team this last past fall, mm -hmm. he's got some offers. Mm -hmm. uh, Kansas, I think, Duke to play college football. How was he to coach? And it sounds like he's got a very bright future. He's coming, and yeah. he's, he's, he's improved dramatically from his freshman year to now, which is normal of anybody, but uh, he's taken some big – big steps and i think the one thing that we're uh that he has to understand is, is what we've kind of talked about is maturity level yep. and i think if you watch any of the basketball games uh was early on as far as you know we get a foul call and he kind of threw up his hands and the body language stuff and so those are things that jack has to understand is it's it's going to be a different role for him now mm -hmm. be a different set of eyes on him and uh, something he and i talked about uh, but he's a real coachable kid. Uh, he's a kid that uh, uh, is dynamite, moves his feet really well. Um, I know the college guys are are biting at the bit, and they should be. And it's something that you know the, the credit to Jack is that he's playing all sports. Yeah. And I don't Big think time. you see that nowadays, and right. I think that's a shame. And I think it's something that uh, you know our society is kind of pushing away from. Is is uh, is everybody's having eight month seasons where they're having these private clubs doing this other stuff and i i just think we're taking away from the kid letting being a kid be a, right be a be an athlete go enjoy different things because you only get one shot at this as you and i know uh i'm just glad that you know my life wasn't just centered around one thing back in the day because i think it makes you a, a more well-rounded person and something that we're getting away from as a society one of your former staff members, uh, Shan Schillinger, good friend of mine, um, he came here my senior year right when he got cut by the Falcons, I think. Really, really liked the guy. Um, we became pretty good friends. He was on your staff, um, moved back to Bismarck, him and his family after all these coaching. Did he just like call you up and was like, hey, I want to coach again? Or what was the story with that? Because I mean, it, he was at Mississippi State. It was his sister oh. who, through Facebook Messenger, asked if I ha would have an opening. For her brother and i knew shan prior to this prior to that uh from his coaching in nebraska coaching different things he spoke at this clinic a few times um and i told her hell yes yeah what and a great we message really, we really didn't but i was gonna find one yeah. uh and so he he came on staff and it was something that uh uh unfortunately you know the one thing about jace i don't know if you know him very yep, well and, and my son and Jace are very close. And I got one more story about those two. Okay. Um, but he he was very, um, just very professional. And you knew that high school football wasn't where Chan belonged. And it was some, but he was great to work with. And somebody who um, I still talk to this day and just somebody who's uh, 
you know, he's got a real zest for life and everything he does. And, uh, you know, the, the story about Jace is that uh, Hayden was, Jace was a big part of why Hayden chose Dickens State, okay. and whether Hayden will say that or not. But, um, you know, they were very close. Jace was the OC and, and um, um, he was very instrumental in getting Hayden here and, and, and talking to him. And so I don't remember what year it was, but um, Hayden calls me and is crying. So you as a parent start thinking, oh boy, okay, drinking, yeah, you know, girl trouble, girl trouble. Do we get somebody? You know, am I going to be a yeah. grandpa more? Yeah, earlier, yeah, yeah. You know, go. So all these things are going on, and he barely gets it out of his mouth, and he says, "Shills is leaving," <sighs> and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "What?" <laughs> yeah. He goes, "Shills is leaving." I said, "Oh my god!" I'm like, "What's well, a oh, college?" You know, that's yeah. what happens. Mm -hmm. So I hang up the phone. Two minutes later, the phone rings. It's Schillinger. He's crying. Oh, my. And I'm like, I can't deal with you guys. Yeah, I yeah, said, yeah. I'm going to come over and beat the hell out of both of you yeah. guys. I'm done. I'm, I, can't, I can't do this right now. But uh, no, just a great family. I don't know if you, you know, you said you're friends with them, but you yeah. know that family is. Schillinger is a yes, big time. Yeah. Um, when he got the job, he's now the head coach at University of Mary. Yes. Did he talk to you about applying for that or what was the backstory on that? Well, we saw, I was at a basketball game. Okay. And I tried to go to, uh, we had a couple, we had Gunnar Swanson who played for me. It's not like I go to a lot of Mary Marauder events, but yeah. um, um, I just tried to make it once, you know, just see some of my former athletes. And anyway, I was sitting at the basketball game and in came Jace and uh, his wife was wearing an orange, orange coat. Oh. And I'm like, hmm, this is when he's still on staff with yep. me. And I, he came and sat by me and said, uh, should I be doing something? Oh, I'm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, you know, no, I'm not, you know, JC, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Shan is, he's, oh, no, oh, no. Yeah. And so then I was like, okay. And then a, a couple of weeks later, he kind of calls me, he goes, yeah, I think I'm going to apply. I said, well, yeah, good for you. You know, he's like, what do you think? And I said, well, they're going to need somebody like you. And it's something that, uh, uh it's going to be a project, but, uh, you know, it's going to take, take some time and, you know, he, he's going to be great out there, unfortunately for Russ. I know. Yeah. He's a, he's a stud. And I, I saw him at the WDA tournament. He's just a fun guy to talk yep. to. And yes, recruiting has got to be really easy for him. But um, listen, before we wrap up here, I mean, I, I talked and I did some research before 25 years coaching, teaching um, over 200 career wins. Like I said, six state championships. What's something to, to kind of put a bow on that to summarize your career thus far and kind of what you would say about your former players, ex-coaches? I think the one thing, the, the best thing about this job is the relationships that you have. And um, I think that uh, for any young coach out there um, that's just starting, and I would tell you to enjoy it because it's going to go by in the blink of an eye. And it's something that, uh, you know, you always – you know, you would see when you first start is you look at guys like, holy smoke, they've been coaching for 20 some years, you know, and you just didn't think you're going to be able to do that. Right. And, um, and it's a grind and it's something that, uh, like I said, it goes by in the blink of an eye, but I think the relationships that you build with kids and relationships you build with other coaches, um, relationships you build with coaches in your own building, like a Jordan Wilhelm and a Steve Miller before him and, uh, you know, those are things that are very valuable and it's something that, uh, you know, I've been very fortunate enough to have a lot of great people in my life and, and be around, or be around of, uh, just a bunch of super people. And I, it, there's nothing more satisfying as a coach and yeah, we can talk about state championships and all that stuff, but there's nothing more satisfying than seeing some of your former guys out in the community being professional, doing success, having great families. Um, that's what it's all about. And that's what you hope for and it, it it every kid seems like your own kid and it's something that when something happens to them and it's negative or they're in their you know something's in the press it's bad and uh you, you feel bad because you feel like you've let that kid down some way shape or form and uh we're in the business to, to, to develop young guys that uh, want to go out and be successful and, and hopefully that uh you know you make a little dent in their life and it's something that uh you know you cherish Great answer. Damn, that was really good. Okay, we got uh, two segments left. Okay. Okay. This next segment. Is the chicken getting cold upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> We're almost done. We're almost done. I promise. Chicken's cold. Beer's cold. Everything's yeah, okay. ready. Okay. So this is called 10 for 10, Coach. 
So it's 10 straight questions. There's oh no there's no right or wrong answer, but you have to answer them as quick as possible. Okay? Oh, okay. And you remember my name's Dallas, right? I got you, Dallas. Okay. And away we go. Cat or dog? Dog. Hot dog or hamburger? Hamburger. Palm trees or evergreen trees? Palm trees. Lake or ocean? Ocean. Favorite actor or actress? Oh, Denzel Washington. <laughs> Ooh, good pick. Favorite band or rap artist? ACDC. Great pick. What city in Texas has an NBA mascot nicknamed the Mavericks? Dallas. What city in Texas has an NFL team nicknamed the <laughs> I, Cowboys? I see where you're going with this. Dallas. <laughs> I got you. Okay, well, this Who's get the to... best? Go ahead. <laughs> Who's Who... your favorite guy? By, by far, Dallas. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> I appreciate Coach Gibson. It's been awesome. Uh, Swim Lessons is a podcast about overcoming the tough times. Um, you've been in the coaching business for a while. I'm sure it's not always been highs. There's some lows there too. And and just leave us with some. What's something that Coach Gibson says to himself when maybe the chips aren't falling his way and his back's up against the wall? You know, I, I've, I've been through some things and it's been some tough, tough roads like you talked about. And the 0-9 season was, was not too long in the memory here. And it's something that, you know, when the, when it, when things are bad, you have to understand is is that things are hopefully going to turn. And I think when things are bad, and we did a lot of self-evaluation, I did a lot of self-evaluation, and it was the point where you're looking at yourself, is this really the time? And that's what kind of gets out in the community is, well, he's old and things like that. And when you don't, you know, what people don't see is behind the scenes, you're doing all the same things. I'm, I'm still there on a Saturday night till 2 in the morning watching film, uh, I'm in there on Sundays getting ready for the game plans. Uh, you know, all those things haven't changed. But I think the one thing is, is Wally Goulet, who was, who was somebody who's very inspirational to me, is, is a lawyer in Bismarck. And he had a, he had a uh, young man that played for us. His son played for us. And I went through some tough times and, and, and some off-field issues. And, and uh, he came and talked to me and he said, you have to understand when things go bad, it's like a it's like a pond and there's a big splash. And he goes, eventually you have to understand about that splash as things just kind of go back to where they are and it kind of ripples out. And so that's the biggest thing I could probably tell somebody is, is yeah, we're all going to get moments where they just kick you in and just beat you down, but you understand the splash and then hopefully eventually that that goes away and it just kind of ripples away and you're back to back on your feet and you know, like I said, the the I just worry about where our society's going with a lot of this stuff, and I think the social media really is a big concern, and it's something that even with the players and the parents, and uh, you know, I don't know what you were raised like, and I think this is something that that I've always liked to say is that I think parent involvement is a good thing, mm -hmm. but I think it's getting way too much. Right. And I look at traveling basketball, right. uh, and there's not just traveling basketball. There's a lot of traveling different things now. Right. But I think, you know, I could never see my father organizing something for me to go play. Mm -hmm. You as a kid just went out and just did it. Yep. We got the guys in the neighborhood, whether we played basketball, we played base baseball, when it was snow, we played football. We organize the own thing, our own thing as kids. Right. And I think we're getting way away from it. And I, and I, you drive around any city right now and you see basketball hoops in the driveway and just look to see how many kids are out playing it. And then, and I, to me, that's pretty sad. I right. think that's, that's where we are as a society are really missing it. We really are. And I, I understand that, uh, <laughs> you know, our parents, we were out and they didn't know you're gone and it's dark. Yep. And supper bells, ringing. yeah, supper yeah. bells ringing. Yeah. Now you Street come lights home. Street lights are on. Got to yeah. go home. Yeah. So I mean, but they didn't know where the hell you were. Right. You, know, you could have been across this town and nobody knew and didn't really give a damn. Right. I mean, I mean so, how fast were you riding bike? You so now it's, I don't know. It's just something that really concerns me, and I don't yeah. know if it's good or bad. You know, I just, I just think that, uh, you know, let failure is a good thing for all of us. Mm -hmm. It's something that's humiliating. It's something that. It's a learning thing that uh, all of us should have to go through at some time. Well, that was a great answer. I appreciate that. I've never heard of the splash method, but I'm going to apply that myself. And I really, really, really genuinely appreciate your time. I know it's a busy day for you, but uh, thanks for stopping in and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate it, Dallas. Thank you, sir. Thanks, coach. See you later. Thanks.